It's 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Why is there so much traffic? <laughs> this is the dumbest thing to be mad about. No, I don't even care. Uh, no, nope. Well, hello, welcome back. Welcome to part two of our INTJ, yep. <laughs> Which type is this again? If you're unaware, I have made a previous video to start this whole process, so check that out. I will place a card if I remember here, here, not really sure yet. Just wherever you see a card on the screen. I'm not even going to recap because that feels like a waste of time. I believe one of the last things I mentioned was their concern or this overwhelming sense, uh, this feeling in the background that they're being wasted or their talents are being wasted. I'll also add, due to their introverted nature, there is a strong need to be acknowledged and given credit where it's due. However, without all the shenanigans and the silly attention, you know? And as I also mentioned, they pretty commonly have that experience of being the smartest person in any given room. And it can be a source of frustration for them that not everyone sees this or sees the full extent of it. Even though they're very often considered really smart by the people who know them well. And this kind of leads to a list of things that become INTJ problems. As a society, we also tend to glamorize the raw computing power, but we don't have a lot of love for the people who come up with solutions that mean that we have to change a lot of stuff. So the natural consequence of this is we tend to marginalize problem solvers, especially really good ones. Unless those particular problem solvers are putting money into our pockets. Let's face it, most solutions require a certain bumpy road or a transition cycle. One of the most maddening things consistently for INTJs, I would suspect, is that we as a collective society, at least in the US, tend to value efficiency over effectiveness. It's really maddening for INTJs because their joy, if you will, is not just creating systems or complex systems, it is creating sustainable systems. So living in a world that's so short-sighted, it's just insult to injury for an INTJ. And this can unfortunately make them jaded and pretty cynical. That leads me to this next pain point and perhaps awkward, large, loud elephant in the room begging to be acknowledged. And that is that this can unfortunately lead INTJs to double down on being so much smarter than everyone else. And therefore being really dismissive, you know, the whole no one puts as much thought into things as the INTJ, that kind of stance. And the thing about it is, to some degree, this is true. People do rarely think about things as long and hard as they tend to, but the whole dismissive attitude combined with feelings of being pushed out of society to the margins creates this kind of perfect circumstance for the INTJ to um, become very prideful. So once the INTJ moves into this, no one sees what I see and no one can understand the way that I can understand loop, then it's all just kind of too tempting for them to get stuck in this place of just ideas and contemplation, just conceptualizing. Back to when I said INTJs have a very hard exoskeleton and a very squishy center. Like INFJs, INTJs lead with that introverted intuition. They use this intuitive process to see things as others see them and to get in the heads of other people. But unlike INFJs, they don't have extroverted feeling coupled with it. So instead, INTJs have extroverted thinking and this analytical process creates a sort of buffer for them. It gives them a little space psychologically and emotionally. 
this is their exoskeleton. It gives them room to think about long-range implications. Essentially, they create their own intellectual workspace. And this allows for some really, truly exceptional thinking. However, introverted feeling can basically encourage them to be more sympathetic to the subjective human experience. And whenever they engage with this process, I believe that they get the sense that they're kind of vulnerable. And that's because they are. Their intuitive process allows them to see how others see and their introverted feeling encourages them to mirror back how others feel and because the INTJ is able to occupy their headspace and their heart space if you want to call it that they can kind of become at that person's mercy in a roundabout way this is something that is not commonly talked about when it comes to INTJs if you read up on them online, you're not going to find this in the stereotypes, but this is a very real, very deep part of INTJs. That exoskeleton has a really great purpose. It helps them create the necessary boundaries, the healthy boundaries, to be sure they don't get squished by other people. It's worth noting, a lot of INTJs have self-reported that um, growing up, if they were not allowed to engage with this process, the extroverted thinking, whether it is by the parents or the school system or what have you, if they were trying to lead a group or get projects accomplished, they sadly just stopped trying if they weren't allowed to use that process. And so they use introverted feeling the only way they really know how, and they end up calling upon pride to sort of help them get through it. So they use that pride as a barrier instead of that extroverted thinking, which helps you in the moment, but it's not nearly as good as getting to use that extroverted thinking. You know what? Part three, coming soon.